Hey folks, dude here. Uh, I'm gonna simply refer to this video as well the shortest, straightest line. I'm gonna knock it out real fast because it's freaking cold out here. All right, what did I get? Honda Accord, missing the better part of its front end. Total piece of crap. Um, had a hook up to the beast. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, missing windshield. Um, other assorted niceties. It's piece of crap. Uh, let's see. Dents all along the side here. Uh, let's see. The back end looks really, really spiffy. Ooh. This is always a good body shop repair. Specified duct tape. Never leave home without it. Fix your car up with it. Um, total piece of crap. I mean, this car is just trashed. I mean, it's even missing the radiator and the condenser and everything else. Dude left me with a flat tire. Uh, no wheel lock key. So basically, I was locked in out because I was at a, well, a Honda dealership. Got the key, popped this wheel off, changed it out real fast. Because I don't like dealing with flat tires and throwing dollies. And I hate throwing dollies if I'm only dealing with a flat tire because it makes my life suck. So anyway, this car is now down the road, going into the scrap yard behind the green fence here. It's a done deal. It's a done duck and good riddance. Um, I'm going to do other well, segments, but this is the first part of it. Good times. All right, we're on to car number two. Ugh. Yeah, that's right, the Plymouth Voyager, also known as Iacocca's Revenge. Not a particularly great vehicle after about 70 to 80,000 because it's transmission grenades. Uh, the Mitsubishi 3 liters were okay motors, but they would tend to eat valve guides and smoke like a chimney. Um, in terms of actual driving, what do they drive like? They drive like a mom-mobile that really is just not that great a vehicle. Uh, can you stick a lot of crap in them? Yeah. Do they hold up? No. Uh, what year is this one? Entirely too old for words, but I guess the guy managed to squeeze a few thousand more miles out of it. But it's crap. It's going to the boneyard. and uh, I don't like these things to begin with. Yeah, I'm just going to tow it. Piece of junk. I hate them. Uh, oh, okay, I'm sure you guys are now going, Okay, dude, isn't hate just a little bit of a strong word for the, the, the Plymouth Voyager? No. No, it isn't. It's basically a container for assholes doing their daily going arounds and uh, picking up, dropping off. They're little obnoxious ones. And Okay, the biggest problem I have with usually the contents of the Plymouth Voyager is their assholes. Usually they're liberal assholes. And uh, if anybody happens to be a liberal asshole watching this video and they don't like it, do be sure to hit the dislike button because I'll continue on in my mindset of describing things as I see them. And this is a container for assholes as they go down the roadway of life imparting their pieces of crap to everybody that they meet. I still hate this car. I really, truly do hate this car. All right, I've taken officially a break from uh, the last car or two. Uh, read like about an hour wasted frickin' driving. Ugh. Shut up, phone. You're getting on my nerves. I hate that chick, but it's the only voice that's loud enough for my GPS on my cell phone. Ugh. Well, anyway, the long and the short of it is basically uh, one of the office girls transferred from the other location down to this location. Is she inept? Is she just not good in a computer? Um, no, I think she just didn't really figure out the fact that there was a holiday or two in between the time I was supposed to pick up the car. Oh, she forgot to add four days of storage. Well, four days of storage, $200. I'm like, um, dude, okay, well, here's the dollar amount. Here's a check, $1,400 check. Uh, the guy in the body shop's like, well, that, that's cool and all, but, um, okay, here you go. Here's the car. Just send us a check. This was the father. The son comes in and goes, Oh, no, that's not my policy. I, I don't trust these guys. Multi-billion dollar operation, mind you. Uh, well, no, no, we don't trust these guys. Or maybe not multi-billion, but high millions, okay? These guys are like one of the big names of, um, like, wreck cars and tons of parts. And, you know, they're not going anywhere. So anyway, this guy's like, oh, no, no, it's not my policy to, uh, you know, have stuff in arrears. I, I don't trust you. Uh, not you specifically, but I don't trust you, quote-unquote, and I don't think that you're basically going to send me the last $200. It's like, uh, dude, no, you just take the invoice, sign it on the bottom when I say basically you owe $200, you fax it in, you got a copy of the invoice, you will get a check for $200. We already paid you $1,400, why are we going to stiff you for two? Ugh. Well, anyway, this guy basically goes, no, 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 I'm going to take my, well, <sighs> I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go play somewhere else. A translation, I had to go back to the yard, get the proper check amount, then come back out and get the car. Uh, this is now the second car I have to get. Uh, did they not pay enough? No, they paid too much. 
$25 too much, and I couldn't accept the car, because the guy goes, um, no, man, th this, is a, this is a police call, and they come in, they do inventory, they realize they stiffed you for $25 more than the dollar amount, which is locked in by our <sighs> rules and regulations, and uh, I'm screwed. Sorry, man, you need the proper check. And I'm like, well, well just reimburse me the 25 bones. He's like, uh, no can do. <sighs> two cars, two screwed up checks, two trips, twice. Damn it, it's getting my nerves. The uh, only thing that's kind of looking up is the fact that I've been having uh, snow on me every five minutes, like blisters. <sighs> blizzards. Blizzards. Not blisters. Blizzards on me every five minutes, and then the sky is miraculously clear again. Like some little kids flicking with a thermostat. Knock it off! Ugh, it's really harsh in my mellow. Hey, this is supposed to be the first day back from New Year's, and it's supposed to be going into a new year where we can look up with hope and... Oh, so far, it's it's just sucking. Oh, what do you say now, you silly cow? You said go east. I'm going east. You know what? I don't like this chick. She gets on my nerves. I'm going to break up on this section. Yeah, that's right. It's the funky white stuff flying around and sticking to my truck. Uh, the worst part is, I step out, it's going to be sticking to me. Ugh. Well, it's, a, it's only snow. I mean, you know, I'm used to playing in snow, so it's just another day at work, but uh, comes the time when you're trying to hook up to a car, you start getting the stuff blown in your face, you get wet, and then you hop back in the truck, and then you're wet, you kind of sort of dry out, you get back out, then you're wet and cold. Good times. Um, not recommended procedure, and anybody that's towed for a living, or pretty much has to play outside as a road warrior, truck drivers, what have yous, you know snow. Sometimes it's just not a lot of fun, and <laughs> it's like, well, it's my usual phrase. It's another day at work. Ugh. But you know what? Sometimes I like it better when it's just a little bit drier and a little bit less white outside. That would just be me, but perhaps others, you know, tend to think along some of the lines. Ugh. Snow. Urgh. Oh, well. On to the next segment. Oh, yeah. One more invoice. And I'm done for the day. Just one more. <laughs> it's been a day full of trial and tribulation. <laughs> just one more invoice. Just one more. Yeah, Doc. Just one more invoice and you're done. Uh, um, maybe just a slight psychic break taking place too. <laughs> Let me just get this car and get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> oh, let me just drive. It's five o'clock at night. I don't have any coffee. I'm wearing glasses, because I normally wear glasses. It's just about night. I've got a half a tank of gas. What do you think? Hit it. It's time to go home, because it's martini time! To quote one of my favorite DJs, that would be the Grease Man. And, uh, let's see what's on the back. Ooh, look! Oh, snap! There's nothing on the back! I, I guess that means I'm done. Ugh. Okay, for the third day in the, well, the new year of 2012, uh, in the year of our Lord, 2012, January 3rd, this has been a day of total and complete and absolute calamity, chaos, conundrum, and sheer and complete convoluted uh, cavalcade of crap. <laughs> oh, man, this day. Well, I actually had a couple cool people. I mean, uh, you know, my last guy I dealt with and picked up his donor vehicle, was um, a nice Jamaican guy, and we had a good conversation, it was friendly enough sort. It is freaking freezing up here in the Northeast. I don't know if you can read that temperature gauge on my dash, but it says 24 degrees, and there's gusty wind, and it is freaking cold, and, um, you know, I mentioned it was freaking cold. Ugh, it's freaking cold, okay? I actually cheated and doubled up with my, um, military liner, um, Folks, I'm going to do a video about, like, you know, light, um, light stuff to carry and what really works military-wise, you know, military surplus. Yeah, I know you can go with the Gore-Tex and all the rest of that, you know, highfalutin stuff, but there are some things that really, truly do work. Um, the M65, uh, oh, man, field jacket, liner. Well, the field jacket itself, but the liner is just phenomenal. I mean, it, I'll go into it another time in another video and... Uh, there's a lot of good kit to be had, you know, on the cheap. And man, you would not believe how much one of these things can warm you up when you stick it inside just a standard old hoodie. And this is a standard old hoodie. You can see all the bite chew and, you know, nip marks. It's 
because this is my welding jacket. This is my working jacket, and I don't care if it gets ripped up, so that's why I tell wearing it. But it's thin. If you wear this thing in 24 degree temperatures, and uh, there's a driving wind, you're freezing your various um um parts off. Ugh. Well, let's just say it gets damn chilly, damn quick. Uh, so anyway, I'm basically done with this stuff. I'm heading back. And, uh, of course, try not to get something up the tailpipe, so I'm being careful in that regard. Yeah, I am still around in Burtonsville and Laurel, so I'm heading out back to Baltimore. Ugh, this has been a day for the annuals. It's, a, it's just been a day. Okay, I'm simply going to say that. You dirty rat, a Steelers fan in my state. You know what? You need to go north, brother. And he's even got the Steelers license plate for... Oh, dude. Dude, you are not... Okay, um, NFC champions, Baltimore Ravens. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, like, hammering on people. Let's just say I want to meet Roethlisberger in the <laughs> cold, dark alley. <laughs> um, needless to say, I think we might want to play him again, and, oh, man, all I gotta say is, go Ravens. Uh, perhaps I'm showing a little too much, um, esprit de corps with the Ravens, but, man, those guys have been kicking ass, taking names, and, you know what, out of all the, the other teams that are playing in the, uh, the NFL... I just really don't like the Steelers. You know, it's kind of like that whole, um, well, uh, Boston Red Sox versus Baltimore Orioles thing. They just don't like each other. You know, there's that whole thing about they don't like the Yankees. The Yankees don't like Baltimore. Does it really mean anything? No. I mean, but I'll tell you what. When they come downtown and they start playing my team, uh, being a native New Yorker, I'm just a little conflicted sometimes. With, you know, it's a Yankees-Orioles game. I'm just a little conflicted. A little. Um, did I really, you know, side with the Yankees? I was kind of more of a Mets fan, but, yeah, that's okay. I mean, you know, it's sports. When you say you root for your team, you're not playing for your team. You're just rooting for your team. That dirty bugger in the Steelers car. I should take him for a ride, but um, of that I shall say no more. All right, perhaps I should simply just proceed northbound, and, oh, looky, I'm going northbound. I don't know if it shows up too good in this camera, but... That does show up as northeast. And uh, I guess I better pay more attention to driving because I just, well, I ran over the rumble strip. Oh, horrors. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, going north, and that's going to be the end of this one. And, um, well, you know what? Here on the Age Podcast channel, I'm going to say it as it is. And, you know what? It, life is life. Nobody gets out of it alive. And sports are sometimes just frivolous, but they are fun. So, here on the Age Podcast channel, I'm going to say, you know what? Eat good. Keeping the ten ring, and as always, here at the Ace Podcast Channel, you know it, you love it.